بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إنكم على بينة من ربكم ما لم تذهر فيكم سكرتان Allah subhanahu ta'ala's help, Allah subhanahu ta'ala's guidance, Allah subhanahu ta'ala's nusrat is with you as long as two intoxicants does not creep into you. Sakratu al-jahl wa sakratu hubbil aish. The intoxication of ignorance, ignorant of Allah, ignorant of the Rasul of Allah, ignorant of deen, ignorant of the sunnah, ignorant of the awamir and the laws and the requisites of sharia. Ignorance with regards to preparing for Akhirah, preparing for Judgment Day, preparing for the Qabr, ignorance with regards to this life, the shortness of this life, preparing for Akhirah, ignorance with regards to Asbab wise, A'iddu lahum mastata'atum, whatever worldly means Allah has given you to utilize those assets for your benefit, for your deen, for your own preservation and the preservation of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sakratu hubbil aish and the intoxication of luxury, enjoyment, extravagance, all different forms of indulgences, looking and searching and being avarice for a lavish life, living in opulence and being completely oblivious of Allah in His Rasul. So these are two elements which will destroy the Ummah. So we have to be very cautious that we do not deprive ourselves of the help, the Nusrat and the assistance of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. وَأَنْتُمْ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And what should be a very important constituent is enjoining good forbidden evil and striving in Allah's path. This is the lifeline and the blood of this Ummah. فَإِذَا ظَهَرَ فِيكُمْ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا When the love of dunya overwhelms you, this is the primary sickness that we are only about luxuries and enjoyment and extravagance and abundance and uh, intoxication of dunya, then you will leave your responsibility فَلَا تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا تَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلَا تُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Then you will be uh, uh, oblivious of enjoining good and forbidding evil and striving in Allah's path الْقَائِلُونَ يَوْمَئِذِمْ بِالْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ Those who hold steadfast and hold to the pure deen. Many people consider many things deen, but it is bad deen sometimes, it is bid'at sometimes, innovations, it is the adulterated version of deen, it is the modernist version of deen, it is not asal Quran and Sunnah. كَالسَّابِقِينَ الْأَوَّلِينَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ These people will be like the initial muhajireen and ansar, those that surpassed everybody. So even among Sahaba, those لَا يَسْتَوِي مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْفَتْحِ وَقَاتَلْ Those who strove before and sacrificed initially cannot be compared. Their levels and their progress is, 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 is no comparison. The people that came afterwards will get the rewards etc. But these will surpass everybody else. So that's hubbud dunya for ourselves, our family, our children, our progenies. It will destroy the ummah. The narration of Anas bin Malik, Muaz bin Jabal and mentioned in, in uh, Ibn Abi Dunya's kitab mentioned, Abu Naim has mentioned it as well. So this narration has come in few kitabs, in few narrations as well. It is highlighting that our life in this world is short, our children are investment and 
a parent in today's time when he loves dunya will plan for his retirement so my children will look after me plan for retirement so my children will support me but we don't plan for the real and ultimate retirement when we die that my children will be hufaz and they will be ulama and they will be the flag bearers of deen so that I can retire in the qabr I can be retired on, on yawm al qiyamah I can retire in jannat al firdaus so we are not put in the right uh, uh, ideology the right mindset in our kids of our real ambition and our real target for the short life so that should be our priority more than that with regards to asbab wise security for children it is important that the people that uh, in the vicinity of kids etc uh, to have certain methods and and and, and uh, safety measures in place amongst that is a hidden cam uh, so that if there is any time you need to know so if it's visible and it's there then it's a deterrent alhamdulillah but more than that just to know the ins and outs of things hidden cams may be beneficial likewise we need to teach, teach our kids certain things certain information whether it's their full names young children don't know their full names telephone number of the parents home phone number physical address etc likewise when we travel overseas the kids uh, may get lost well, which hotel so keep a card with regards to the hotel the, the room number your your name and contact number etc likewise uh, having details of your children have their fingerprints stored have their pictures stored sometimes the dental records these things needs to be stored safely we need to keep these records khudana khasta for whatever reason likewise nowadays we we promote um crime by by using social media etc so be very cautious of what you put on social media likewise teach your children on the cell phone use and internet etc that can be very destructive for their deen and their dunya you have to give them a phone give them a non smartphone smartphones don't make you smart it makes you dumber so uh, likewise if they've got access to a smartphone or a computer there are many parental control apps as well make sure we learn how to use it make sure we track their movements make sure what needs to be restricted it's restricted one wrong swipe one wrong search could destroy their lives likewise the 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 clothes their bags their lunch boxes etc don't write the full details have a code name or have an initial etc uh online predatory is quite common abuse creating fake profiles never ever should they send any picture of themselves forget a uh, compromised picture with a sitter is open especially girls and uh, it is it, it it can have consequences for many generations so educate them that's very important so we don't shouldn't just tell them don't use this but if they have to use them I, I educate them of where they should go what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing as well normally the saying is al insanu harisun fi ma munya what you forbidden from you may tread that path but in bibe and in calcate those adab and etiquettes where they realize and they can understand that like how a fire is dangerous and can be harmful it they need education a simple thing like a firearm a person has it in the house educate the child he may be curious he'll want to investigate so educate them educate them of protocols if they do find a gun what should they be doing etc uh it's all about uh, education and and, tra- and train their mindset that a child should not keep any secrets from their parents at all especially from their parents so when when they have this mindset of 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 not keeping secrets uh then then that uh, stops and prevents many unwanted uh, uh fitness from creeping in another great thing which which many people are negligent about is about drowning and and, and water education etc so we see around 360000 people die uh f- through drowning and more than half of those deaths are people younger than the age of 25 and children under age of 5 are at the greatest risk so drowning is the third leading cause of death worldwide 
from those age 5 to 14. So you will get in every hour more than 40 people lose their lives. And uh, boys are more likely to drown than girls. Obviously, boys are more adventurous. Girls are more cautious. So, and if we, if we look at statistics-wise, between one and four, they are the most vulnerable. So, death caused by injury-related, one to four years age. And uh, a third with regards to children under 19. So, children that are less than a year old are more likely to drown in a bathtub or a bucket. So, it's not necessary that you have a swimming pool that the children are at risk, etc. So from a simple bucket to a bathtub, parents just leave the kids unsupervised in bathtubs and it, it takes a small amount of water for a child to drown. Uh, if we do have swimming pools as well, install a fence that is high enough, make sure there's no openings, there's no protrusions from the side, under, through, etc. The gate, uh, it's very uh, easy for them to open up, so the access, how often it is locked, more safer than that, la ilaha illallah, is a, a pool blanket which uh, they make very sturdy and you can walk on it also and there's no access to no water at all. These, these nets, which we have safety nets, are, are not safe. So if you have to take precautions, take, take, take the safest option. You've got even uh, pool uh, sensors. If somebody breaches a certain area, there's a siren, there's an alarm. Um, so these, these asbab are available and uh, we, we need to utilize it. So prevention is, 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 is better than cure. Education is a tool. So firstly, very important, after taking all these precautions, educate them. What are water safety protocols? Send them for swimming lessons. So make it a target within a certain amount of time. They need to learn by this age how to swim skillfully without any floaters, without anything. So if they are in a situation, they, they, they don't play in water, they swim in water. That's the difference nowadays. Many people know how to play with water. They don't know how to swim in water. And, and that's a skill on its own. Because many people want to become heroes and save others. But you don't know how to swim. You don't know how to rescue others. Rescuing is a skill. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an art. So... Even our children in, 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 in uh, situations as well, they need to learn water awareness, they need to learn water risks, they need to learn some safety rescue skills based on, on, on the age. So whether it's safety equipment on hand at the pool, a simple thing like a, a, a long, uh, the, 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 the instruments that they clean the pool with. So there's a pole there, somebody's drowning, grab the pole, uh, there is a net there. Take the child out with the net. So a small child, an eight-year-old child could learn to save a life if just basic things uh, that they learn. So what equipment should be on hand? Some floaters. So normally we see at the beach they have these floaters, safety floaters, etc. There's nothing wrong. We don't keep that by our pools. A child could be told if somebody is drowning, throw that there. At least if a person can grab that, a small child as well, that will save uh, a life. Likewise, uh, people go to the beach. Very dangerous, very, very dangerous. There are certain currents. Somebody may be drowning, you jump in to save them. And we know of an incident where a family uh, almost lost, many lives were lost because uh, one was drowning, the other one went in, but... Uh, the current was too strong. Both of them couldn't get out. They were preparing for death. So don't ever play with the sea. Don't play with the sea. Likewise, in one of the countries in Dubai, uh, mother left her kids. The nanny was there. And the one kid went in. The other kid went in. And they were started drowning. She went in as well. She also drowned. The mother came back. All three deceased floating in the water. So you cannot just save anybody by jumping into the water. You, you need to identify, you need to know. So the, the safety protocols are important. Uh, bystanders that are there, safety, rescue, resuscitation, etc. Just simple basic rescue techniques. Like we said, whether you got a pole, where you keep a rope at the edge of the pond. So uh, a floater. So older children can, can learn out of water rescue. Because most of the time, and the studies show, 
that uh, the peers are close by when a child is drowning, but they don't know what to do. So they are already in the water. Uh, teach them that a simple skill of a child, even if you can't teach them to swim, teach them how to float in the water without support. So floating is very easy. It's a simple skill. If they learn how to float, so if you're in that situation, then uh, float on the water. So a, a person can buy a lot of time. Every, every second is important. So these are skills which it's important that we learn. Likewise, another great risk is choking. So one 0.6 deaths per 100,000 population. So when, when the air flow from the lungs is stopped, then uh, whether it's breathing is, is, is stopped partially or completely, partial choking, etc., and uh, oxygen doesn't go, which, which leaves, uh, can, be, can be disastrous. So one child every five days uh, dies due to uh, choking, la ilaha illallah. And it's a major cause of death for persons over the age of 65. So choking, not necessarily uh, choking like we think of kids, but eating food. So there's a method where a person is choking, where you remove the choked item from their throat. So a choking death happens every two hours. Somebody dies every two hours through choking. And over 100,000 visits to the ER yearly through choking as well. And uh, in the US, over 100 million Americans have no defense uh, against choking, whether it's uh, due to obesity, whether it's being alone, whether it's a disability, etc. But uh, again, um, precautions, the methods that it's out there, the information is out there. So more people die from choking than die in fires. Uh, non-fire related carbon monoxide poisoning, drowning, accident, shooting, so much. And look at the time wise, zero to four minutes, um, brain is safe, four to six minutes, possible brain damage. Six to 10 minutes, likely brain damage. And plus 10 minutes, probable brain death. And if you look at uh, response time, not less than 10 minutes. So possibility that by a person, child, adult have become in brain dead. And if we look at it statistics wise, most uh, choking deaths are caused by food. Most choking deaths are caused by food. Otherwise, uh, coins, uh, sweets, candy, 30% of ER visits are because of this year. So, a simple thing like a, a, a life saving choking device. Uh, you get adult, you get child, you get toddler anti choking devices. Uh, like we said, there's a method to, to, to help a person from choking. So normally we use the word choking, but it's an obstruction in an airway, whether it's a food item, a small uh, object, but the other forms as well. It's called aspiration, where uh, uh, the object is inhaled into the respiratory system. So children put things into their nose, nostrils, etc. Then suffocation, where there's an obstruction on the airway for something that blocks the nose, the mouth, uh, simple things like a plastic bed, bedding, mattress, then strangulation, uh, something external that uh, constricts the neck, the neck, and it interferes with uh, your, your your respiration. And it can be a simple thing like a curtain cord, a, a clothing string, entrapment, so uh, a mechanical interference with respiration uh, when the neck or head gets stuck. You know, in, in tight places, a bed bunk, uh, balcony rails, car windows, and then crush, which is called traumatic asphyxia, which uh, is a, 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 man, a mechanical fixation in the chest. So the child is playing busy, something falls, the furniture, the garage door, etc. So there's, there's, you get the small objects, which would be cautious, buttons, bottle caps, bottle tops, uh, coins, uh, disc batteries, balloons that are latex, very dangerous, Legos, other small marbles, rubber balls, then cords, we have to be cautious, whether it's the crib, the playpen, drawstrings, ropes, belts, leashes, etc. Then suffocation hazards, whether it's your bedding, um, plastic bag, plastic films, etc. And then entrapment, where children get trapped in the chest freezers, ice boxes, etc. So we have to see all these precautions, uh, loose parts, soft bedding,
toys that have cords. Uh, even a normal dummy pacifier don't tie it around the neck. Have a clip, uh, harnesses, car seats. Uh, be in close range to your kids so you they, they have the correct supervision. Magnetic toys very dangerous. Um, the beds as well, bunk beds. Uh, precautions are very important as well. Then another risk is poisoning. So uh, 45,000 deaths in children and youth under the age of 20. Uh, so fatal poisoning, uh, whether it's simple things like uh, a paracetamol, rem um, cold cough remedies, tablets, antihistamines, anti anti-inflammatory drugs, then prescription medication, uh, household products like bleaches, disinfectants, detergents, etc., paraffin, kerosene, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, poisonous plants, then from animals, insect bites, etc. So we should store medicines in, whether it's prescription or non-prescription, in safe place. Likewise, all detergents, etc., where kids cannot reach Keep it in the original containers. Don't put it in containers which look like food, etc. And uh, don't assume that it's child safe, that your child might not open it also. And don't ever tell children that the medicine tastes nice also. Because they'll think so, it's delicious and they'll try it as well. So, uh, specific family rules of storing medicines, whether it's your elderly children as parents as well, have safety rules. Safety rules for household chemicals. Make sure latches are very strong. Um, when you clean and be very cautious, kids are not around as well. Laundry supplies, keep them in their place. Car supplies, anti-freezers. Likewise, simple thing like your perfumes, hand sanitizers, etc. can be very dangerous. Mouthwash, paints, be cautious about that. Other items in the house, a simple thing like nail polish, shoe polish, can be very dangerous as well. See what plants we have. So whether it's berries, mushrooms, see what snakes are in the area, uh, etc. So bites, spiders, uh, all these things we need to, we need to know our environment, we know our area we are living in, etc. Back to school, art supplies also, and then uh, in case in emergency also. So we've child-proofed our home, but uh, do we know CPR processes, poison control, which number we need to contact, what's the doctor, emergency number, code closest person, uh, neighbors, who's efficient in this year? Look at the symptoms, difficulty in breathing, speaking, dizziness, unconsciousness, foaming, cramps, nausea, etc. And uh, know, have information, the, the, the child, his age, what was consumed, the product, if it was a snake, what type of snake, description, etc. And um, in certain situations, what you need to do, so if the poison touches the skin, what needs to happen? If it's a toxic substance, it goes in the eyes, it needs to be flushed. If it's a poison that's inhaled, what needs to do? If it's a snake, what needs to be done? If a person loses breathing, then CPR, etc. And if they've uh, taken certain things, then uh, certain doctors recommend keeping a setup uh, that induces vomiting so that immediately, let's say even if there is an overdose, something that uh, you can give the child so that they start vomiting everything in because by the time you get to the hospital or help gets to you, also, uh, that is very important. So, so simple adab and etiquettes uh, can save many lives as well. These are just a few points which, which we have mentioned. There are many other, other protocols and details which we need to learn and we need to understand as well, whether it's bullying and the protocols, physical, verbal, uh, relationship, bullying, etc. These are things which we, we as the people of Iman, need to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the value of every breath of our life and uh, give us the understanding so that when we die, we are happy and Allah is happy when our kids and generations to come leave this world. They die on Iman. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.